I thought I was done with the subject. All right, so I'm not. I'm going to get very specific on this, okay? So I've been reading some more about the lion and the lamb lying down together, right, in Isaiah 11.6. <clears throat> now understand that I also used to think that that was the phrase, but that was before I actually went there and read what was physically there on the page. I still remember the first time I actually opened the Bible to Isaiah 11.6, and I myself read it, and it said wolf. And I thought, well, that's strange. You know, and then I saw a lion later on, and I thought, well, that's, that's strange. You know, and no one could really explain it to me. But they always referred to Jesus as the lion and the lamb. And uh, then Narnia, in the Chronicles of Narnia, also emphasized Christ as the Aslan, right, the lion. <clears throat> so now... You know, and I, I took the scripture as what it said, you know. I didn't quite understand it, but, you know, I was a brand new Christian. And then in Peace in the Valley, we'd sing that, and it would say, the lion shall lie down with the lamb, right? And I'm like, there it is again, you know. I thought, well, maybe it's somewhere else in scripture. But it's not somewhere else in scripture. And everyone swears up and down that it was in Isaiah eleven six. Now, understand that this did not, this was not an issue until they started talking about the Mandela effect. When Mandela died. When was it? I think it was 2013. Anyway, it was around there. So it wasn't until after Mandela died and people were shocked and started talking about, well, I thought Mandela died before. And at that time, we still didn't have this phrase, fake news. All right, and so we really didn't, we didn't even think that it could be fake news. And the Mandela dying was fake news. For sure it was fake news, absolutely, 100%. It was fake news. Now, it might have been, you know, a journalist who was reporting something that he actually heard, you know, from on the ground there, because there were intelligence operatives who were spreading lies about things, disinformation. I know, I was an analyst in the military, and that was what we did disinformation or misinformation, depends on how you want to say it. So, the, after Mandela died, and they started talking about the Mandela effect, you know, they didn't quite call, I don't think they called it that at the beginning, but it was about Mandela's death, that's what triggered it. So then, uh, the first forum I was reading from, in the last video, was from th about three years after his death. So they were already calling it the Mandela effect then, because there's a reference to it. And um, they can't let it go. They cannot humble themselves under the written words on the page in the scriptures that are the testimony of God. They can't. They have to exalt their memories above it. Okay, I've already told you about this. Well, this is going into it a little bit more from another angle. So I want to just go in here. And, and it says, I agree to... Uh, it was always the lion and the lamb, started reading the Bible at age five, read it often. So again, they're referring to their own authority. I know it because I read the Bible since I was five years old, and I read it again and again, and I know exactly what it says. And so it's all based on their own authority, and they expect you to take that as authority. That, well, you know, and if you think that it wasn't changed, well, you've got to believe me because I've this and I've that and I've this and I've that. Okay. Let me back up just a little bit, because there's an even better one where they're doing that. It says, um, <clears throat> where is this person? Uh, oh, up here. Yeah, here it is. So this person says, it was the lion and the lamb, exclamation mark. It was a lion David killed. It was the lion that took his sheep. The Almighty is the Lion of Judah, just as Aslan in the Chronicles of Narnia, <laughs> even referred to it, uh, portrayed him. The lion is Christ, the last sacrifice, the blood of the lamb. Um, when the angel killed the firstborn in Egypt, it was the lamb's blood they covered the door with uh, so that the angel would pass over them. It was... It was lions were in the den to 
kill God's prophet, yet did not harm him. And it was the lion that laid down with the sheep as it was in Genesis before sin and being cast out of Eden. <laughs> what? My mother was a Quaker Methodist pastor. Oh, sorry about that, but that's unbiblical. My mother was a Quaker Methodist pastor. My grandfather was a Dutch Christian Reformed pastor. My stepmother was a Methodist pastor. Two pastor women. I have read multiple different versions of the Bible. I read and studied Revelations, not kidding, Revelations, around 20 plus times. A wolf hides in sheep's clothing, but never does Christ lay down with the devil. Only the lion, the creator, Abba. Huh? What? Only the lion, creator, Abba. What? You see how these people's memories of the Bible are all jumbled. They're completely messed up. And yet they swear up and down, you've got to believe them that it said the lion and the lamb. And it's never said the lion and the lamb. I think the first time I looked was back, well, it was back in the uh, very, very early 80s. And it said wolf. I remember. I remember how shocked I was because I heard lion and lamb all the time outside of the scripture. Okay. In fact, this guy, uh, he goes back and he finds a sermon in a, in a, well, it's a commentary from the 18th century where he men mentions the lion and the lamb shall lie down together, but doesn't attribute it to scripture. He's explaining how the Jews and the Gentiles will not war anymore. And there won't be war anymore. And uh, after the bat Battle of Armageddon, and no more persecution, after the slaughter of the witnesses, and this abundance of peace, spiritual and temporal, will be as long as the moon endures. Psalm 27, 7. So he cites that. And, th and all this will issue in eternal peace in the world to come, so it's John Gill comments on Isaiah 9, 7. So he doesn't attribute that phrase, the lion and the lamb shall lie down together to scripture. He doesn't give a reference like he does with the moon. So that shows that it was a common phrase spoken from the pulpit or in commentaries that was extra biblical. It wasn't in the Bible. He doesn't put any attribution to the Bible because it's a non-biblical phrase. Just like um, the phrase, God's, God helps those who help themselves. That's not in the Bible. Some people thought it, thought it was. I'm serious. I've run into people who, who think that's in the Bible. So, yep. And uh, the one that I want to really want to read to you, though, is down here. So I agree to, it was always the lion and lamb, started reading the Bible at age five, read it often, cover to cover, things your heart and spirit confirm stay with you. Things your heart and spirit confirm stay with you. That's called prejudice. It is. It's prejudicial mem memories. When you perceive something that you're reading a certain way and you have an affection for it, you embed that in your memory. Whether it's correct or not, you embed that in your memory. So yeah, your heart and your spirit do. But that doesn't mean the Holy Spirit. He capitalized S as in Holy Spirit, and that's not true. Christ came as a lamb and comes back as a lion. Okay? Ferocious for those that have mocked and destroyed. It doesn't say that. Again, he's making this up. He's making it up and, and saying it as if Scripture says this. He's elevating it above the Scriptures and what the Scriptures actually say. He is the Lamb when He, all capital letters, why, I don't know why, first came, and also the Lion of Judah. Was He the Lion of Judah when He first came or not? The lion and lamb will be reconciled once it is finished. No, that's not what it's saying. 
Isaiah 11, 6 is not saying that Christ's first coming and second coming will be reconciled. It has nothing to do with that. It's saying that the predator will no longer terrify the most innocent among the prey because he'll have no desire to eat him. And that's what those pairs of animals are all about. I showed in the last video. That's what it's about. It's not Jesus as the Lion of Judah and Jesus as the Lamb and that's reconciled. No, it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing, it has zero to do with it. There's no context that indicates anything like that at all. But the context does indicate about the pacifist nature of the animals at that time. That is what it's about, and only about that. Uh, wolf and lamb, never. He refuses to accept the truth. Paul said there would be a delusion that would come upon people in the end times. I'll read it to you so you don't think that I'm reading from my memory and changing it. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's see here, right here. I happen to be open to it. <laughs> I was looking at something else, but I happen to be open to it. And with all deceivableness, it says, um, it says, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. Brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. The scriptures say what God means. If you cannot accept it for whatever reason, whatever reason, if you cannot accept it, you will be damned. It says right here, you cannot accept the truth. You refuse the love of the truth. It says it. <clears throat> because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Only those who receive the love of the truth will be saved. And for this cause, because they re refused the love of the truth, they did not receive the love of the truth, the love of the truth. That's not even the truth. That's the love of the truth. They did not receive the love of the truth. They turned it away. Because of that, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That so that all they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Either you accept the testimony of God as it is written, and you change your memory, you change what you think is true to submit to it, or you are rejecting the love of the truth. It's proven. It is proven in you that you have rejected the love of the truth. If you hold on to your delusions, then it's proven already that you will be damned. You must submit yourself to the Bible as the testimony of God and believe the words written on the page. And it's not just for you who, who believe in the Mandela effect and the altering of certain verses, which never happened. It's also for those of you who hold church doctrine and the doctrine of the reformers above the scriptures and refuse to believe what is literally written on that page. Man is justified by actions and not by faith alone. It literally says that. And every time you try to explain it away, 
those of you who do, you prove that you have rejected the love of the truth, that you love a lie, and that God is putting a delusion on you, a strong delusion, to believe a lie so that you will be damned. You know who's going to be damned and who will be saved based on how they respond to the Scriptures. Do they accept the Scriptures as they are literally written, or do they reject them? Now, you've heard me talk about mistranslations. Yes, there are mistranslations. Okay, we're not talking about those. We're talking about taking the truth that is there. And if they reject that, especially the parts that are translated correctly, which is most of it. If they reject it, then they're proving that they have rejected the love of the truth in advance of that. And God is sending a strong delusion so they'll believe a lie and be damned. And he's not making them be damned. He's doing that in response to them rejecting the love of the truth into their salvation. They've rejected it. So you must be very tenacious about taking the scriptures at face value. All right, so let me finish what, what they were saying. Too many, so he said, you know, that Christ uh, was no wolf. Um, Oh, hold on a minute. Did I finish this? All right, so wolf and lamb never. Christ was no wolf. A lamb he was and lion of Judah, but no wolf. What does it have to... It's not talking about Christ there in 11.6. It's not talking about Christ, but he switched it out. He has switched it out in order to make this lie. 11.6 is not talking about Christ. So why would he be offended that it's talking about a wolf lying down with a lamb? The lamb's not Christ, and the wolf is not Christ. In either case, there's nothing there about Christ until you get to the child, perhaps. Christ was no wolf, a lamb he was, and lion of Judah, but no wolf. Too many have read and know this by heart, not from hearsay. Too many have read it uh, and know this by heart. The know is the questionable part. They may have read it, but it's been swapped out because the pop culture in Christian Christianity is so much stronger. When you're singing this hymn, Peace in the Valley, every week in church, until Maranatha music took over in the 80s, Every week in church, you're singing Peace in the Valley, and it says the lion shall lay down with the lamb. And from the pulpit, he talks about the lion and the lamb lying down together. You know, and, and you see posters with a, a lion and a lamb lying down together. And poster here, lion and lamb. Poster there. In your girlfriend, your girl, in your girlfriend's um, uh, bedroom, she's got her poster. So you go buy a poster, put it in yours. Your, your mom's got a poster of the lion and the lamb in the kitchen. You know, and, and everywhere you see, it's the lion and the lamb together. They never, ever, ever, ever put the wolf and the lamb together in a poster. Show me one. I mean, like from 1980 or earlier. Show me a poster with the wolf and the lamb lying together. You say, well, that's proof. No, it's not proof. It's proof that Christians don't like that image because they see the wolf as... The predator. Exactly. That's exactly why it's there. The wolf is the predator. And the lamb is the baby of the sheep. The innocent helpless. That's why it's there. That's the communication it's saying. It's not talking about false prophets. It's not talking about the metaphors of false prophets and false teachers lying down with true Christians. No. That's where you make the mistake. You're trying to superimpose the metaphor of Matthew 7 of the wolf onto this Old Testament passage of Isaiah 11, 6, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. 
All right, let's keep going here. <laughs> Not much more, okay? So it says, uh, too many have read and know this by heart, not from hearsay, but by reading the scriptures their whole life. So these same Protestants who hate the Catholic Church and cry out sola scriptura, that the Bible is our ultimate authority, whereas the Catholics believe there are three legs of, of authority, tradition, the Church, and the Bible, and that they're all equal, some of them elevate the Bible a little bit more, but they say they're all equal. Now this person and all the people who are caught in this Mandela effect lie. They want to elevate the, the Christian's opinion above Scripture, not just equal to it, above Scripture, saying that the Scripture is wrong and that there's been some black magic, there's been some quantum physics, there's been some sort of satanic change. They have, every one of them has a different story for how they think it might have been done, but none of them can really prove it or explain it. They can't. And yet they can't all agree. They all disagree over how it was done. And they say it doesn't matter how it was done, it was done. And we know it because we, as Christians, who love the Bible by our hearts and the Holy Spirit is with us, and reminding us of the scriptures that we read, that we are, the, we are the authority above what's written in the scriptures. And we're testifying to you that that is wrong. You see where this is going. This is what cults do. This is what the Jehovah's Witnesses do when, did when they made the New World Translation. They didn't like that it said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. They had to change it, and they had to change the Greek as well. That's what they did. They didn't like it, and so they changed. They didn't want Jesus to be God, so they changed it. They made their own translation. Then they went back, since we were arguing with them about the Greek, I was one of them, that they had to actually change the Greek too and come up with their own Greek. And they took from the Greek that was used by heretics rather than what was used by the church. And that's what happens. That is what happens, and that's what's happening here right now. They're elevating the opinions of a group of people above the scriptures, saying the scriptures are now wrong. For whatever reason, that somehow they've been changed and they're now wrong and we're right. It's a deception. It is a delusion, a lie, and is going to damn you to hell. Too many have read and know this by heart, not from hearsay, but by reading the scriptures their whole life. And the Spirit does intercede for all the abominations and changes to the Holy Bible that have occurred over the many years. Now, he's not talking about translations and mistranslations. With that, I do agree with him, that the Holy Spirit makes up for deficiencies in translations, where someone has purposely or inadvertently mistranslated a passage or a few passages, that the Holy Spirit makes up for that, yes doesn't mean you, you should continue to read those bad translations if you have a better translation available. But that's not what he's talking about. Uh, some who have changed it, um, thinking that us humans, so saying that it was not humans who changed it, thinking that us humans are too feeble and dumb to know uh, what, thy, what thy means, or other words changed, what? Deleted, completely making bare so many things the Bible once had within it. Thus why God commanded to not add or to take away from his scriptures and words. Huh? So who do they think changed it? Satan? One person said it was some black magician, very powerful black magician, changed all the Bibles in the world. They're watching too much Hollywood. And that is precisely what has taken place with all new versions of the Bible. What about your old Bible? Pull out your old Bible and read it. You don't have your old Bible? Go dig it up. Open it up to Isaiah eleven six. See what it says. It will rebuke you yourself. There are too many new versions to count. The Bible has always been mystical. 
That is not a word that is used in the Bible. That is an Eastern mysticism word, mystical. Again, there, this shows, like I said in the last video, their minds have been poisoned. They've been poisoned. And they've never detoxed. They need to detox. Mystical with precious truths that darkness hated and set forth to change it. Yes, the Mandela effect is real. So they believe in the Mandela effect. Oh. Here we go about CERN. I'm serious. Them thinking to change time, dimensions, and events through CERN, C-E-R-N, and other ways, ways we don't even know about. Yeah? Argument from absence. Arg argument from ignorance. These that remember this scripture remember it since childhood through endless reading and studies. No, it's not from through endless readings and studies. It isn't. It's from pictures in children's Bibles that have a lion and a lamb lying down. It's from posters on the church wall. It's from posters on your own bedroom wall, your mom's wall, everyone's wall. T-shirts. Ministries named Lion and Lamb Ministries. When it went missing, we noticed. Really? When was that? Tell me exactly when it went missing. One woman says, well, I don't know if it was a year or two ago, but I know exactly what it said. You can't even remember which year it was. How can you say you, you know what it said? It says, when it went missing, we noticed. Studies, mind you, not from listening to a pastor or bishop, etc., but studies heart to heart directly with God through their own eyes. Who is they? You see how strange and interesting these are. And the guy who wrote this, this post debunking the whole thing says, science fiction and fantasy is not evidence. You feel like it should have said lion and lamb, and that is not enough for you. But it is not evidence. Oh, and that is enough for you, but that is not evidence. All you have is quack junk science fiction. That's true. And lack of humility. He's missing the big picture. The guy who wrote this and is responding to them, he's missing the big picture. That they are doing what they're accusing the Catholic Church of doing, but even higher. They're elevating themselves above Scripture. And they're doing the same thing that, that the, the heretics are doing. If you go to our website, you'll find uh, 12 foolish doctrines. It's at 12 right now. It might be more. But um, it talks about the different heresies in Christianity today, especially in the Protestant churches. And these are people who are elevating the church doctrines and doctrines of the reformers above the scriptures. And this person says, I agree with you, this is another satanic trick to try to turn people from God's word, to try to make the people, to get the people believe that God's word has mistakes. But as for me, when I'm reading slash studying the Word, I pray for God to give me the understanding of His Word. Satan has always tried to mess up God's Word. This person says, I've never read verse 6 to say the lion and lamb, and I've been reading the Bible since I was 16, and I'm now 52. So it's about the same time that I started but with the mental image of all the animals at peace in verses 6 through 8, it's easy to just mash it up and read lion and lamb. Coupled with the imagery of Jesus being called the lamb of God and the lion of the tri tribe of Judah, it's easy to assume verse 6 read lion and lamb. There's also the month of March, uh, month of, the month of March proverb, in like a lion, out like a lamb, that just makes those two animals seem to go together. He's only scratching the surface. What? Just open your King James Version and read it. it. says, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. This is all about God sending our Messiah, Jesus, and in the future there will be no more bloodshed. Animals will no longer attack each other, and we as 
we as well will have peace through Jesus. Preach it. Someone says, I cannot believe people actually fall for this Mandela nonsense. This Mandela garbage is nothing more than a demonic psyop on people's minds to deceive. He's right about that. That's what I'm saying here. And, uh, and the author of this is exactly, Yea, hath God said. <clears throat> and then someone says, I don't know what the Mandela effect is, but the verse reads, The wolf and the lamb, unless someone snuck into my house and changed a very old Bible I have, then the verse reads, The wolf and the lamb. He's reading from a very old Bible. So that proves it right there. <clears throat> So here's, someone explains the Mandela effect. So hang in there, I'm almost done, all right? You don't understand the Mandela effect. Mandela effect claims that through quantum effects, time is altered, which alters our perception of time. However, memory is so strong that it is not always altered. <laughs> he's no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> he has no idea what he's talking about. That quant quantum effects, they're talking about quantum effects, like people used to talk about electromagnetism. I did a lecture um, when I was doing my degree in history, and this was about um, history. It was misconceptions of, of uh, science in pop culture, right? And we were, we were specializing, that class was on the scientific revolution around the 1900. And uh, so I took key terminology that pop culture misused and, and took out of context and misused sometimes out of fear and ignorance. And so I took things you know, like atomic, the word nuclear and atomic, and I took things like electromagnetism you know, and things like this and showed how the culture, I took quotes from pop uh, sources of that time uh, up into the, pre, uh, into the interwar period and, and even into the 1950s for some. And I showed how exactly this kind of thing was happening with those terminologies because people didn't understand them. And it seemed like Tarnamaga, black magic. That's the Slavic term for it, Tarnamaga. Tarn is black and Maga is magic. It seemed like black magic to them. And so the same is true with quantum. The word quantum is the same thing. No one understands it in the population, general population. So they use it and, and they try to kind of throw a few adjectives here or there or noun here or there you know try to use it so it sounds like they might know what they're talking about you know and that's what he's doing here the mandela effect claims that through mandela effect claims how can an effect claim anything <laughs> it's got to be people who claim it the mandela effect claims that through quantum effects time is altered no it doesn't no it doesn't which alters our perception of time. Well, if time is altered, it doesn't alter our perception of time. How does it alter our perception of time if time itself is altered? No. However, memory is so strong, really, all oh, memory is so strong, that it counteracts time changes, and, and he's a superhero. He's got a big M on his chest. Memory! Yeah? That's where all this garbage comes from. You've got to stop watching that garbage. You've got to purge that from yourself. That's the world. You've got to purge that junk from yourself. However memory is strong, that is not always, that it is not always altered. So basically, the claim would be, the Bible originally said, Lion and the Lamb, then there was a quantum disturbance. <laughs> disturbance, like, don't disturb me. Uh, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch my quantum. Yes, there was a quantum disturbance. Which disturbs our timeline. The whole timeline is disturbed. Somehow, you like that? That's the explanation. His explanation is that somehow, that's not an explanation. All you're saying is you're going to tell what the results are, but you aren't going to tell how it happened. That's not proof. That's not even an explanation. Somehow. Somehow the result of that disturbance, what disturbance? How do you know it was a disturbance, a quantum disturbance of our timeline? 
<laughs> just, these people are insane. Don't go down those routes. Don't go down those routes. You got to purge yourself of that garbage. Purge yourself of it. It's garbage. It will take you away from the Lord Jesus. Somehow, the result of that disturbance was that the verse was changed to wolf and the lamb. Not only that, the verb was changed. It wasn't that they, that they dwell together, not lie down together. So, and why would a disturbance in our timeline, <laughs> it's so stupid, change two words in Bibles? In Bibles, not in other books, in Bibles. Two words in one verse. And then they point to other verses where, oh, there's a unicorn in the Bible. There were never unicorns in the Bible. Yeah, there have always been unicorn in the Bible. Yeah, I was shocked too when I first saw it. <laughs> but yes, there's always been a unicorn in the Bible. In the King James, they mistranslate it into a unicorn. That was a cultural thing. Yeah, there are unicorns in the Bible. Yep, yep. So, but why? Why would it change those? And why just in the Bible? If it's, if it's a physical thing, that's a disturbance of our timeline, why the Bible? Why Isaiah 11.6? Why not God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble and flip it? God opposes the humble and gives grace to the proud. See, then you've got the Satanic Bible. Satanic Bible did that. It inverted everything that's in the Bible. It's called good. They called evil. Everything that was evil, they called good. And they went through great length to try to do that and brainwash you. All right, so <laughs> somehow the result, right? This alters all of history after that point, really. The result of that disturbance was that the verse was changed to wolf and the lamb. This alters all of history after that point. Most people have no strong memory of the original event. So to those people, for all of history, it was wolf and the lamb. However, for people who had a strong memory of it, for some reason, maybe a verse of special significance uh, to, to some past tragedy, their memory isn't altered, and they remember the event as it was in the original timeline, not as it was in the current timeline. Yeah? Oh, don't you love this science fiction? They're so poisoned by the world's Hollywood. Serious. It's Hollywood that has perverted their imaginations to where they, they come up and, and create myths upon myths upon myths. They cannot accept the truth. They can't. That they are the variable. Not the Bible. They are the variable. They are the ones who are going to die. How long has, has the Bible been around? I don't have my Bible in here with me. It's in the other room. I sleep with it. How long has the Bible been around? Well, 2,000 years. And before that, the Old Testament was around for at least another 2,000 years. So, I mean, the Bible's been around longer than any person has ever lived. So you tell me who the variable is in this. You tell me. You got copies of this Bible all over the world. Let's take the King James, for, for example. It's all over the world. I don't even know how many copies, millions of copies, maybe billions, including electronic format. And there's one of you, <clears throat> excuse me, and if you're 52, and if, if you're going to live to 85, well, you got 33 years left. Now, if you're going to live longer, like God has promised some of us, much longer, you might not even be halfway through your life. Praise God. Like he promised to John. But for those of you who don't realize your mortality and the fragility of your mind, 
and that you exalt your mind so high above everything else and everyone else, you will be damned. You will. You cannot humble yourself under the scriptures to be judged by the scriptures. Instead, you want to judge the scriptures and say there was some sort of quantum time disturbance to change the scriptures. And so now, you, why are you even reading the Bible? Let me ask you that. Why are you even reading the Bible? Stop. If you think the Bible has been changed by the enemy, by the devil, stop reading it. If you think the Holy Spirit will tell you everything you need to know, and that the Bible has been compromised by the enemy, why are you reading it? Stop reading it. The fact that you advocate that we continue to read it and even memorize it, taking it to heart, means you are a hypocrite. And it means, it means that you are working for the enemy. Because you think it was changed by the enemy and you're telling us to take it into our hearts and memorize it. This is proof that you are working for the enemy and you don't even know it. The rest of you who are faithful to Jesus Christ, stay faithful to Jesus Christ, stay in the scriptures, humbly under letting God do his work in you. And may the Lord bless you as you seek him with all your heart.